My name is Xiao Jingyan. Uh, here is my artworks in the show Chi of Water. This exhibition will open until April 8th. My work explores the transformative space between nature, culture, and the making of identity. I often take familiar objects or materials and reinvent them in the, way, um, in the uh, contemporary aesthetic and presentation. Um, I try to price open the layers of meanings that uh, express the uh, complex state of living in between cultures. Chinese culture, tradition, and training inspire my work. My experience of living in Canada, adapting out, uh, outside of my native culture, molds and informs my work. I just oppose uh, Eastern mythology with Western cultures to discuss environmental and social issues by creating uh, ethereal installations using lingzhi mushrooms, pine needles, and reed, uh, and many other natural materials. Here in this room, you can see three works that put together for this exhibition, Chill Water. The work behind me is titled In the Shells. It's paper and reed sculpture installation. This work is inspired by the traditional Chinese lantern and kite making. For the traditional Chinese lantern and kite, um, people use uh, bamboo strips, but it's um, it's very hard to get access to bamboo in Canada. So I developed a, a technique using reed instead of bamboo. Uh, I also worked with different papers to achieve the best result I want. The forms I have been creating are inspired by cocoons. The cocoon is such a potent uh, symbol that speaks to many layers. At one level, it uh, represents uh, the need for staying uh, safe and protected. As an immigrant, I see, you know, I see the need that uh, we, we are seeking for safety and protection. Uh, there's an old thing in China, um, a literary translation is uh, one make uh, its own cocoon to uh, bond, uh, bond itself, bond, you know, him or herself. So that's the situation we, we don't want to get into, get too comfortable with the uh, cocoon we create. Um, I feel like uh, as an um, uh, immigrant, we left our country to embrace the world, not to circumscribe ourselves. Therefore, we, we can see the cocoon as the representation for transformation uh, in the process of growth, a temporary stage, uh, an evolutionary stage, like those cocoon forms represent uh, new life start, rainbow, and reconciliation. Um, I draw um, from my own experience as immigrant, um, embracing the uh, daily reality um, uh, that encompassing the human reality uh, of uh, constant change uh, and growth. I have been making those uh, paper sculptures for over 10 years. Um, over the time, with the perfection, perfection of my skills, um, the forms become more uh, complicated. Those forms are made uh, in the material uh, restraint, uh, but they are uh, complex uh, in their geometry, and uh, also they possess this uh, translucent delicacy, and also um, has this um, tensile and internal strength. When I was in graduate school, I minored in woodworking. Uh, one of the courses I uh, I chose was wood uh, was turning. Uh, wood turning. Uh, so we put a chunk of um, uh, wood on the lathe, and with the two uh, the handhold tools, we were able to cut uh, uh, shapes uh, that sym symmetrical around the axis of the rotation. It's very much like the uh, um, potter's wheel, and it's a very ancient technique. 
you can create uh, candlesticks, uh, legs for furniture, posts uh, for architectures, and even um, hollow objects like balls. Um, it was very fun. Um, the forms I created on the list, they're all like perfectly symmetrical. But the forms behind me, you can see they are not that perfect in that way. Um, but those like the forms we found in nature, they look symmetrical, but not in the perfect way. And uh, like our face, we all know none of us has a perfectly symmetrical face. So that's how it works in nature. And uh, the reed has its in internal strength and it's kind of its uh, mm, uh, temperament. So no matter how hard uh, like I try to form them to perfectly straight or circular forms, and after a while when they relax, they deform. And I, I actually like this aspect of the, uh, of the um, uncontrollable aspect of nature. And I embrace this into the process of the making, uh, especially in, uh, the, uh, you know, when you're working with the natural materials. The spindle kind of shape suggests rotating. So I installed uh, models on the top so the work can rotate by themselves. And this added to another layer of the reference to planetary. And uh, so the, those uh, forms look like the uh, orbiting planets. When I create the work, I first uh, make the reed skeleton and then I apply paper onto the openings. I cut the paper to uh, different shape and sizes to match the openings. And then I glue the papers on and after that I apply uh, several, several different layers of glue and coating uh, to tighten the paper and also to protect the paper from discoloring and yellowing, yellowing from the UV lights. Uh, I like to suspend my work. I see the suspension as a uh, an aesthetic device as well as a um, uh, con uh, conceptual approach. Um, suspension create a sense of alarming danger. It suggests uh, the balance. Uh, it suggests a balance, and also it um, refers to a levitating life. I see myself suspended in between cultures, and in. in suspended in between what I was and what I'm becoming. The work you see here is a bronze cast from my Lingzhi Girl Sculpture Series. Uh, the Lingzhi Girl Sculpture Series is a series of uh, sculpture um, made of cultivated uh, Lingzhi mushrooms. And Lingzhi is also called Rishi uh, in Japanese and it's, we also have it in Canada. It's a, a fan-shaped, red varnished looking fungus. Uh, if you go hiking in the woods uh, in the fall, you probably will notice uh, those mushrooms from the decaying trees. Lingzhi is uh, also called the mushroom of immortality in China. Uh, it believed to have super magical power that can uh, make people live forever. It has been used as medicine in China for over 2,000 years. Chinese sage and doctors believe Lingzhi has uh, possessed the mystical power, and the legend also says it can resurrect dead people. Uh, since ancient time, Lingzhi has uh, um, appeared in the uh, literature and stories and worshipped uh, by many people. The characteristics of good fortune and longevity associated with Lingzhi become a unique component throughout Chinese culture. Those motifs take the form of clouds and waves in traditional Chinese painting and drawing, textiles, crafts, and tech architectural design. Quite a few years ago, I went to China to a mushroom farm. I saw they were growing Lingzhi mushroom. 
those uh, used to be rare mushroom are now become so common, you can buy them easily on the market. Uh, the naturally grown mushroom, uh, Lingzhi mushrooms, they're uh, different in size, color, and shape. But the commercially grown mushroom, they are unified. I was uh, struck by the idea of a man's control over nature, and I want to use Lingzhi as a sculpture material to grow um, uh, sculpture works that um, speak to the relation of human with nature, press the idea of death, dying, decay, regeneration, immortality um, through the process and the forms. After two years of experimentation, I finally was able to successfully uh, cultivate my first Lingzhi bust. Um, when I create, creating the work, I first create the mold, uh, then I pack, uh, uh, you know, pack the sterilized wood chips, also with Lingzhi spars. Uh, I put, put this mixture into the mold I created. Then I control the humidity, light, and temperature uh, to, to ensure the germination of the spars. Uh, then the spars uh, produce mycelium. The mycelium is the root system of the mushroom. And they appear as a white uh, feathering web. So they uh, fill up the gaps between the wood chips and actually bind them together, uh, acting like a binding agent. So when I see the wood chips all turn white, and I just gently remove the mold. And then I put this uh, uh, mycelium sculpture into the tent. Uh, I created this like a green uh, house. And I also keep con controlling the growth environment. And then as the, the mycelium keep developing under the surface, after a while, um, then the pin head of the mushroom will pop out. And then after another three to four months, it will grow to um, uh, four lingzhi shapes. And during the process, I actually, I step back. I let the mushroom, uh, the nature control. And uh, I think it's important that uh, the science and the chance play an equal part in the process. Then they have the equal chance to shine. So far, I have cultivated 18 busts. So from this 18 baths, I picked one and have it cast into bronze. That's what you see here. So I give it a patina finish. So this sculpture uh, mimics the uh, brown vessels uh, and artifacts you can find in the museums. And also it uh, shows um, the uh, sense of aging and the passage of time. Bronze often uh, associate with a monument, uh, the image of power and eternity. I often asked how do I preserve my Lingzhi mushroom sculpture? So I, I would tell you know, people a story. Uh, in the Forbidden City in Beijing, if you visit there, you will see a lot of large Lingzhi mushrooms embedded in cabinets or carved wooden stand. And uh, those are the collections from the Qianlong Emperor from uh, close to 300 years ago. One of the Lingzhi even have a poem written on its surface by the emperor in gold paint. You can see how longevity those Lingzhi mushrooms can be. As an organism, Lingzhi has informal and fragile life, but um, the, the Lingzhi in the Forbidden City and other collections by Chinese, Asian Chinese people can last for a long time. And the bronze, um, you know, we always think they are uh, long lasting, but actually they're not. They get recycled, um, melt down, uh, like in the wartime because they're a material for weapons. And also the statues get taken down because the change of uh, political and uh, social environment. So they're not as long lasting as we usually assume. 
by replacing the material, I think it is a stealthy way to um, make people to think the presumed ideas. This work you see is titled Mountain of Pines. It's made by piercing thousands of dried pine needles onto the silk organza to form a floating image of landscape of mountains. The pine is associated with Taoist and Buddhist immortals, and it has been uh, become the a favorite subject for painters and poets. And because uh, its hardiness and the fact it can uh, retain its green leaves through the winter, characteristics of longevity, uh, immortality, and uh, uh, persistence and strength. This has been uh, depicted very often in the traditional Chinese paintings. There are a lot of pine trees in Canada and uh, in my yard, there are three big pine trees. Um, every year, we collect the needles from the gutters and also from the grass. I put those uh, pine needles into the uh, composter. Uh, after over a year, uh, when I open it, um, all other plants turned into soil, but the pine needles were still there. So this amazed me. So I picked up one of the pine needles and examined it carefully. I see one end, um, it, it has a, a sharp end, uh, and also uh, on the other end, it's much thicker. And it, for me, it uh, looked very much like a ink brush stroke. So then it's kind of give me uh, the inspiration. I was thinking, uh, why can I use it uh, like ink strokes to create a landscape painting. Then I start collecting the pine needles. Um, through the process, I learned a lot about pine trees. Do you know that pine trees is the most ancient tree? And the, um, the one found in Nevada uh, has 4,800 growth rings. It believed uh, to be the, uh, it believed to be the um, oldest living organism, uh, as we know. And also I found uh, in my yard, there are two different types of pines. One is the red uh, pine. It has needles of bunch of two. Uh, the other one is the peach pine. It has needles of bunch of three. And those other things I never noticed before. I collected needles uh, in my um, yard and also uh, in the parks around my house. Um, uh, some of the needles I collected directly from the ground. Uh, those are more yellow and brownish. And uh, I also collect them directly from the trees. Uh, so I cut them and have them dried uh, inside. And those uh, needles uh, kind of maintain this uh, greenish tone. So the work uh, with those different needles has a little bit different color tone. Another interesting thing when I'm thinking about the, the work and also the Chinese traditional ink painting, they are made of uh, ink, uh, Chinese ink. The Chinese ink is made of pine shoot. And here, when I'm creating this landscape, I use the pine, but directly from pine needles and they represent uh, the mountains full of pines. Since ancient time, mountains has been imbued with the supernatural powers in Chinese people's imagination. It also seen as the gateway to heaven. Inspired by the utopian uh, scene depicted by the uh, traditional Chinese painting, I created this contemplative uh, scene where my Lingzhi sculpture can drill. And also plus the uh, paper reed sculpture in the far background. And this is, uh, creates a imaginative uh, fairland that can only exist in the imagination. This fantasy world exists in between the real and the fictional, the West and the East. 
the human and the animal, the heavenly and the earthly, here the myth and reality conflate. Thank you for joining me and learn about my work. The exhibition Chi of Water is up at Art Gallery of Mississauga, and it will be up until April 8th. Please come to check it out.